Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and I am not centered in the screen. Uh, we are answering publicly posted questions uh, from YouTube users. We have a question here posted, I guess, three days ago by Charles Johnstone. Um, and it was posted on our video entitled, What are the main concerns about speaking to the press about discrimination or sexual harassment? And Charles goes on to ask, how many cases do you suppose never saw the light of day because if you get in a public lawsuit against a previous employer, they will remind you, think about the public record you are creating. If there was only a trust fund set up to give people FU money, many more cases would come forward, I imagine. So Charles, you are absolutely correct. Uh, we believe that even after the Me Too movement, we, before the Me Too movement, we believe that about 2% of victims of workplace sexual harassment and workplace discrimination um, were coming forward after Me Too, we think that might have doubled, so 4% were coming forward. So yes, you are correct. A huge percentage, 90 plus percent, we believe, uh, of victims of workplace sexual harassment and workplace discrimination are not reporting what they're experiencing. And that is a problem for society, but it's, you know, it's it's a problem on so many levels because you can't fix the problem if you can't identify the problem, right? So I will say this. I've got a couple videos on the channel about quiet casing, right? How you can bring your case in certain jurisdictions on um, less public or non-public dockets, right? So listen, is there any perfect way to keep a case quiet? No, right? There's always going to be someone who could speak about it, right? You're going to be suing people. There's going to be employers, there's going to be paralegals, there's going to be judges, arbitrators. You know, there's there's people who could break NDAs, people who can break confidentiality. There's no perfect way to keep something quiet, but there's an awful lot you can do to keep it from showing up in background checks, to keep it from showing up on Google, right? There there are ways you can do these things and fight for your rights without destroying your career. This is a reality situation, right? People have to think about their career because no, almost no employment discrimination case or sexual harassment case is going to be so valuable that it will make up for losing the rest of your career. And I don't, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from bringing a case, right? I mean, it's important that you bring your case, but you do have to stop and think about, okay, what is this going to do to the rest of my life? What is this going to do to my ability to earn and provide for myself and my family? Um, how will this impact me? And it's different from industry to industry, and it's different from person to person, right? But it's an important conversation to have with yourself before you go forward. And I'll note this. If your attorneys are just telling you, hey, we're going to file your case in court, this and that, um, and they're never talking to you about ways to keep things quiet, or if that's something you're interested in, I have some questions. Are they are they putting you first? Are they putting your well-being first? Or are they putting the value of the case first? And those two things are not necessarily the same, right? You you can come to your attorney and say, hey, I just want you to max the value of this case. I don't care what happens. That is great. Thank you for that marching instruction. We will do that for you. We will try our absolute best to make that happen. But that's probably not what most people want. But most people need to think of their well-being first and then the case second, right? So if as a firm, you're just like not asking what your marching orders are, not having a conversation about like, hey, have you thought about your career? Have you thought about how this is going to impact you? How do you want to handle this? Do you want us to try to keep this off Google? Do you want us to try to um, keep this as quiet as possible? Do you want us to keep an eye on your background checks and make sure that this isn't going to crop up, right, in terms of how we craft a settlement agreement? These are all things you can do right there's a lot you can do to quiet case a situation like this it's not perfect it's never gonna be perfect human beings can speak right and you can say whatever you want uh, murder is legal people still commit murder breaking an NDA breaking confidentiality agreement that too is a breach of a contract or a statute or a law depending right people still do it the goal is to minimize the risk of that. The goal is to do everything we can to protect you and to spend time thinking about that and making it, um, making it a priority. Because you can get 90% of the way there. You can really take a, a lot of steps to protect yourself. 
with help from professionals, right? It's going to be hard to do on your own. And when you're thinking about things like doing press, you need to be cognizant of the fact that when you do press, all the quiet case in the world, it's done. It's over. It's not going to work, right? Like you've done press now. You're out there. If you weren't anonymous in your press, which is rare, there's very few journalists who want to print anonymous cases for folks these days. But if you weren't anonymous, your case is out there. You're out there. You're going to show up on Google for the rest of your life whenever someone Googles you, searches you, bings you, whatever search engine they might use. Gopher? I think that was from the 90s. I don't know. Um, it's out there, right? So that's the second consideration here. Um, if you go public, you're never going to put that genie back in the bottle. That ship has sailed. Right? I think I'm mixing metaphors. But you get, what I, you get my point, I think, right? So, Charles, you're absolutely correct. Um, people are routinely science, silenced by their fear of what could happen in the future. And my point here is there's a lot we can do to protect folks from that. A great deal we can do. There really is. Um, but you need to be sure you're having those conversations with your counsel. Because not every attorney thinks about those things. Not every attorney has been around as many high profile cases either. I'm not, not talking this up, I'm just saying. like repetitions matter right if you've had 80 high profile cases and you've managed to keep 70 of them quiet oh that's a good amount of experience right if you've had three high profile cases and you managed to keep zero of them quiet well we're we're, we're in training Right, it's not, it's not there yet. We might need to talk to some other attorneys. You know, this hypothetical that that firm that, you know, is not hasn't had as many repetitions at handling cases that reporters are interested in. Um, they should call up other firms, have a conversation. Hey, how would you handle this? How do we keep? How do we? Our client doesn't want to be in the press. How do we keep our client out of the press? Can we get a journalist to print an anonymous story? Can we? Um, file this on a private docket? How can we uh, craft a settlement agreement so that um, you know there's a, a set reference that the employer can't depart from so we know that they're not going to um, just tank our client's career? And how do we give that teeth? How do we, how do we view that from a uh, performance angle? Like how do we ensure that we can enforce it, right? These are things that employment attorneys need to be thinking about and talking about and if an employment attorney today doesn't have that answer then she or he needs to talk to another employment attorney who does I'm not saying any one employment attorney is going to have all the answers but we're all working with various toolkits and you're starting out like you're starting out on a trade how many tools have you got not enough right you're not gonna have all the things you need been in that trade 10 years 20 years that toolkit's full it's got everything you need just about right I mean it's gonna have so many capabilities so many tools that you would never have thought you would have needed um, and that's why there should be conversation there should be a bit of a, a back and forth a give and take on our side of the aisle for the you know the plaintiffs employment attorneys uh, we need to be guiding each other helping each other out right because um, if we're all working in silos then none of us are benefiting from each other's knowledge Anyways, I'm going way along. I'm rambling. I hope everyone's having a great day. If this was helpful, like and subscribe. Take care, everybody.